romantic suit of clothes. It's called the Emperor's New Clothes. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a far off land, there lived an Emperor. Now the Emperor loved his people almost as much as he loved old clothes. He loved clothes more than anything in the world. When he wasn't at court or with his council, the Emperor was in his closet looking at his clothes. Oh, there's nothing here to wear. <laughs> Tribune, Tribune, bring me something new to wear. Something purple. Yes, purple and red shoes with buckles and buttons. <laughs> I just love buckles and buttons. <laughs> One day, two peddlers named Hoodwink and Possum came to the village. There they heard of the Emperor who loved new clothes. I have an idea. An idea, Hoodwink? Oh, oh, good, an idea. They disguised themselves as tailors. Then they took two empty suitcases and went to the palace where they were brought before the Emperor and his court. Your Emperorship, we are the true tailors of um, um, uh, Tuttle. Yes, Tuttle. Uh, we heard about your interest in fine clothes and have come a long way to tell you about the most amazing garment in all the world. Hoodwink and Possum told the Emperor about a special suit that only they could make. Yes, indeed. We have the know-how. Yes, the know-how. To make for you a one-of-a-kind uh -huh. magic suit. <laughs> Did you say magic suit? The tailors said that with the magic thread they had in their suitcases, they could weave a special cloth. A cloth they could make into a magic suit. And what made the suit so magic? Why, they said, only people who were wise could see the suit. And fools could not. Oh, it's invisible to fools. <laughs> <laughs> Fools can't see it. Oh, that's what he said. As if they only the wise can see magic. <laughs> the Emperor liked the idea of a magic suit, especially since it would be the only one of its kind. And will it have buttons and buttons? Why, of course. Oh, splendid. So he ordered the tailors to begin the suit right away. <laughs> a magic suit. <laughs> what a wonderful idea. The Emperor agreed to give the tailors whatever they needed to make the suit. No, whatever you need, gentlemen, it's yours. Tribune, see to that, won't you? Hoodwink, did he say whatever we need? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Possum, this is too good to be true. Hoodwink and Possum asked for a room. A large room. With a loom. Two rooms. And gold. Uh, four bags of gold. To do their work. The Tribune saw to it that the tailors were given all they asked for. Then he left them alone with the gold and the looms. Is he gone? Uh, yes. Hoodwink, do you really know how to make a suit? I know how to make this kind of suit. But, but we don't even have any thread or cloth. Are we going to make it out of thin air? Now you've got the idea, Possum. Just do what I do. <laughs> It'll be easy. So the two tailors of Tuddle began their work. They made broad gestures with their hands and worked the looms back and forth, pretending to make cloth. Will it be a fine suit? Will it be a wonder? Will it be more beautiful than gold? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Will it be a fine suit? Will it be a wonder? Absolutely beautiful to behold. There's never been another suit like this one. <laughs> and I can safely say there'll never be. No one will ever see a suit like this one. Because you see, there'll be no suit to see. <laughs> And yet they'll all agree the suit is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful to be her. Because they're fools! And a fool will always do. What's that? Just as he's told. Oh, really, dear? <laughs> oh, won't it be a fine suit? Well, we'll see about that. Won't it be a wonder? Oh, it 
to be a wonder, all right. Absolutely beautiful to be heard. Yeah. Uh, uh, Footwing and Possum worked day and night on the magic suit. The Emperor would not let anyone disturb them. So no one ever entered their room. As servants passed in the halls, they could hear the looms busy at work as the tailors hummed along. Everyone tried to imagine what the magic suit was like. Oh, it must be grand. Isn't it? It's beautiful. It's stupendous. Possum, that's just the right color of red. <laughs> now weave that color into this area here. Now the Emperor had promised that he wouldn't peek until the suit was finished. But finally he just couldn't wait any longer. He called to his Tribune and asked him to check on the progress of the suit. Oh, Tribune, I promised I wouldn't peek. But everyone's been talking about the suit and now I just can't wait to see it. Uh, go and visit the tailors. You have my permission. See how the suit is coming along. The Tribune did as he was asked and went to the room where the suit was being made. There he saw Hoodwink and Possum waving their arms and moving a needle in and out of the air. Oh, your Tribune ship. Oh, how nice of you to come. Well, here it is. The tailors stopped working and showed the Tribune the unfinished <laughs> magic suit. Isn't it a fine suit? Isn't it a wonder? Absolutely beautiful to behold. As you can see, the suit's not quite finished yet. Oh? Uh, of course I can see that. Uh, of all the suits that we have weaved, of all the styles that we've conceived, this marvelous creation is not to be believed. <laughs> the Tribune looked, then rubbed his eyes, and then he looked again, but he just didn't see a suit of any kind, unfinished or otherwise. Could he be a fool? Why, he could lose his job. Quickly he convinced himself that he could really see... <laughs> oh dear, the magic suit of clothes. Why, uh, the suit is um, uh, amazing. The Emperor will be pleased. He'll be even more pleased if he had a matching jacket for, uh, say, uh, two more bags of gold. The Tribune gave the tailors two more bags of gold to make a matching jacket. Then he left them busily working on the suit. We've outdone ourselves and have won ourselves our very weight in gold. <laughs> so the Tribune returned to the Emperor with a glowing report on the new suit. Of course, he couldn't really say he hadn't seen the suit. The Tribune was too ashamed to admit that he must be a fool. Emperor, its beauty is um, uh, uh, not to be believed. Oh, good. When will it be ready? Tomorrow, Emperor. I'm having a make a, a matching jacket. Well, with such a fine report, the Emperor was even more pleased. Tribune, why don't you organize a parade through the village tomorrow? <laughs> oh, I think my people would like to see this beautiful new suit, this unusual suit. No one will ever see anything like it again. Plans were made for a grand and glorious parade. The villagers put up banners and cleaned the streets to make ready for the Emperor the next day. Everyone had heard about the magic suit, but only the wise could see. Uh -uh. The Emperor hardly slept at all that night because he was so excited. Finally, it was morning. As the villagers lined the streets, the Emperor prepared for the parade. He took a bath, trimmed his beard, and sprayed himself with lilac water. Are you ready, Emperor? Ready? Oh, I've been ready for hours. I've been ready for days. <laughs> the Emperor put on his bathrobe, then followed by his tribune and all the other members of his court, he went to the tailors to dress in his new suit of clothes. A new suit? 
Here we are, Emperor. Uh, uh. They opened the door and entered, and there stood Hoodwink and Possum holding up the wonderful <laughs> magic suit. <sighs> well, I need not tell you that there really was no suit of clothes for them to see. Well, where is it? It's right here, Your Emperorship. Can't you see it? Oh! Uh, why, of course I can. It, it, it's... Silence! Silence! Let's hear what the Emperor has to say. Then all eyes turned to the Emperor. What was he to do? They all seemed to see the suit, but he saw nothing. Was the Emperor a fool? They all waited for him to speak. I'd be a fool to say it's anything less than magnificent. <laughs> the Emperor was pleased. This is the finest suit of clothes I have ever, ever seen. Uh -uh. Mm, try it on, Emperor. On? Now? <laughs> oh, why, yes, of course. Why not? The Emperor stepped behind the royal screen and removed his robe. Possum handed him the magic suit one piece at a time. First the shirt. Shirt. Then the stockings. Stockings. Then the pantaloons. Pantaloons. Then the shoes. Shoes. And then the matching jacket. Jacket. The Emperor slowly stepped out from behind the screen and stood before the large mirror. <sighs> he was convinced that he was indeed wearing a magnificent suit. Splendid! Why, even this matching jacket, it's so lightweight. Let's hear it for the turners! Bravo! 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 <laughs> then the tribune reminded the Emperor of the parade. His subjects were waiting to see his new suit. Uh -huh. Followed by his tribune and his court, the Emperor marched out of the room, down the long hall, through the palace doors, and out into the street. The villagers cheered when they saw him. Of course, no one wanted to appear foolish. The Emperor marched proudly, nodding to his subjects as he made his way past the cheering crowd. See, Tribune? Everyone loves my new suit! But as he turned a corner, the cheers were suddenly hushed by one little boy. A poor little boy named Jason, who shouted, Uh, uh, look! The Emperor has nothing on! The Emperor isn't wearing any clothes! The Emperor wasn't wearing any clothes. Oh, my. They all held their breath as the Emperor stopped and stared at the little boy. What did you say? I said, sir, that you aren't wearing any clothes. The villagers cried out that the boy was a fool. The boy is a fool. He doesn't see the clothes. He doesn't see the clothes. Silence! Did you say no clothes? No clothes? No clothes. The Emperor realized that Jason was right. He wasn't wearing any clothes. Tribune, I'm feeling a bit of a chill. Won't you hand me your cape? The Emperor quickly asked to borrow the Tribune's cape, then wrapped it all around himself. Ah, yes. Mm, that's better. Tribune, I want that little boy brought to me after the parade. Now, shall we continue? The Emperor continued to march in his parade, but he quickened his pace, marching just a little faster than he had before. Uh -uh. After the parade, Jason was brought to the palace. He had no idea what the Emperor would say to him. Do you know what you did today? No, sir. Hold out your hand. Jason was asked to hold out his hand. Then the Emperor dropped a handful of coins into it. Gold coins? Thank 
you. But why? Because, Jason, today you made me see just how foolish I've been. <laughs> you did look pretty foolish, sir. <laughs> did I? Parading around with nothing on? <laughs> <laughs> and so, Jason was rewarded for pointing out how foolish the Emperor had been. As for Woodwink and Possum, they had slipped away some time during the parade, and you can be sure they never returned to that village again. But in a way, what they had said was true. The magic suit really did show who was wise and who was foolish. And because the Emperor admitted how foolish he had been, he was very wise after all. to admit when you've been foolish it's wise to admit when you've been wrong it doesn't make much sense to keep up the pretense especially when you've known it all along no one is perfect we all can make mistakes even kings do silly things now and then so when you see the light just stop and do it right and never do that silly thing isn't smart to think that though you're foolish, the world will go on thinking that you're wise. Because from the beginning, someone sees through your disguise. Although it may try, your own heart never lies. No one is perfect, we all can make mistakes. Even kings do say things now and then. So when you see the light, just stop and do it right. That embarrassing day, they all 